Hey everyone, we are the Gratitude Girls. The Gratitude Girls are in the house. Good evening, Lori. I'm seeing double. How are you tonight? <laughs> I'm great. How are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. The last time we were on our show, I had a different scenery. So this is not a green screen and this is not a zoom screen this is the new home that we're in and i'm really excited to share that we're in the country so this is really wonderful i'm so happy to be able to say that to you and to our, our audience and to our guests tonight this is the dream come true you know when they say live in the dream and you know what i'm talking about because you are going to be telling us about living the dream in the next minute so I want to say how happy I am to be here and to be on our show tonight. I've been looking forward to this. I've been waiting for this show for like a year, believe it or not. There's such a big story to what's gone on with our guests. But I wanted to share with our audience. So I'm Catherine Asaro Myers, affectionately known as Rara. And I am speaking to you from Niagara-on-the-Lake, Ontario, Canada tonight. So all of you Niagara residents and friends and visitors yes that's where i'm speaking to you from and i'm happily doing that Lori, what part of the world are you in i am currently in nashville tennessee <laughs> okay awesome yes soon 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 to give us some other news i'm sure Lori, every time we start our show my mind plays the story of our history and how we met and the whole day of our show, it goes on and on. And I remember like what we both wore and what we did. And, and I think, wow, time flies, you know, time flies so fast. And we have such a great story. Um, for those guests who are watching for the first time, let's tell a little bit about this magical story that we have, because it's not just a story, it's really a story that has like this power to it because we propelled a moment into a lifelong learning journey. So I wanna thank you for being here and can you share with our audience from your perspective, because I just wanna live it all over again. <laughs> yes, so we started the Gratitude Girls actually this month, seven years ago, right? Yeah, seven years ago. So this is our seven year anniversary this month. And so Catherine and I are both in a direct sales company called Send Out Cards. And in that company, every year at their international convention, there's a theme for that whole year. And at the convention, there's an award. And one person wins that award. Every year, there's always only been one person except for in 2013 and every year since then it's always been one person and that person is picked by the peers by customers and distributors all over the world and they are announced and brought up on stage in front of thousands of people and given this award so back in 2013 the theme was gratitude for that year and so our ceo got up on stage and he started telling all the accolades and attributes about this wonderful person that's gonna win this award and then called their name. And so it was Catherine and she got called up on stage and I was in the back doing all my techie stuff that I do and taking videos and pictures and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden our CEO said, but this year we have a tie. And so then he started get, giving all the accolades and attributes of the next person. And he always is very sneaky about it. Like he gives different things that's very generic. And then he starts getting a little bit more detailed. And I kept thinking, I wonder who this is. I wonder who this is. And I kept going through my mind who it could be, who it might possibly be. And then each person that I thought of, they got dwindled out from another clue that our CEO gave. And then finally he said, my name. And so Catherine and I are actually cross lined to each other in this company and we met on stage together in front of thousands of people. And it's just kind of like, you know, we don't believe in coincidences. We know that things happen for a reason and kind of like that love at first sight thing, but it was like love at first sight, but in business and friendship and partnership and 
like literally within like three minutes, Gratitude Girls was born. We didn't know at the time what we were going to do with it. And, but we started it and here we are seven years later, every single month doing an internet show featuring amazing guests every single month. Lori, I thank you so much for that. I remember when Cody called my name and I could barely stand and walk up on stage. And I remember writing that in my I am statements and thinking, this is the moment. And then when Cody called your name, <clears throat> I remember thinking, and I had known who you were. And I thought I would love to meet you because you had been recognized for doing so many things and especially giving the most gifts in our company. And I remember thinking, what would that be like to receive a gift from Lori? Like, who is this woman? And when he called your name and I saw that I was going to get to meet you, I was, I forgot all about me. I just thought I'm going to meet you right up there on stage. And I remember the moment when I stepped back and, and you came up and you were speaking. And then when we walked off stage and we sort of held hands right at the bottom of the stage and that was a magical moment the whole time when you came up, when we stepped off, when we birthed gratitude girls together. I mean, this was just, we didn't know, like you said, what was going to happen. But that feeling, I relive it every single time we do a show. I relive it whenever I tell the story. When we invite people to the show, I wonder, do they really know the magic of what happened to us and what this platform truly does for these guests and ourselves and our viewers over the last seven years, stories from around the world and, and wonderful things that have happened. So thank you for that. And to our audience, this is a dream come true for Lori and I, and we are, we are living this dream and we get to listen to stories and we get to meet wonderful people. And I was thinking about, you know, the bio of our guest tonight and I'm wondering, like, how do I read words when I want to convey emotion? So, Lori, I'm going to take a few minutes and share what I feel. And our audience can read on gratitudegirls.com what we have to say. They can read it on LinkedIn or on Facebook, or they can go to, to the other sites that describe Meg. But here's what I want to share about Meg Walsh. I met Meg a few years ago when I had this vision of where I would be practicing yoga. And I knew it would be with a bright space up on the second floor. And I was new to the town that we had just moved into at that time. It was in Toronto. And I wasn't finding that space. You know, I just wasn't finding it. I didn't know like where I was going to get it from. And I said to my husband, like, I have this vision of where I'm going to do yoga. And that day we had gone for a walk and I saw a sign and we walked up the stairs. And as we're walking up, I said, this is the vision. And I walked in and I saw the light shining and I spoke to two girls who answered my un like a hundred and one questions that I had and they answered my questions and I thought, okay, test one. They actually answered my questions. And I, I met Meg and when I met her, I, I only had like 50 questions because all of my questions were answered. But when I met Meg, I knew that she was making contact with me. Like I knew she was connecting with my needs to be in a yoga space, to be surrounded by that culture. Because culture eats strategy for breakfast. And when I felt that from Meg, I knew that I was going to dive in, all in, with nothing standing in my way. And then I was taught by Meg and the community that Meg and all the other teachers and instructors and, and Don and the culture that they had created. And I was new, right, to the area. And I felt at home, even though I had no idea what a tree pose really was. I thought it was when you stand next to the tree. I thought, oh, there's a tree and I'm going to pose. I had no clue what anything really meant. I just thought, I'm going to go figure it out. 
Now, the other thing I want to share is I walked in with sort of a medical problem, like I had vertigo, if you know what that is. And I never said anything really to anyone. And I dove into hot yoga with vertigo. Meg started to teach. And whenever I saw Meg teaching, I felt that I really needed to be with her. Now, I thought there's something about not saying anything to somebody, but yet they're getting you. And this went on for a couple of years until this whole COVID thing happened. So the bio I want to give to you about Meg is she can tell you all the details about how she got to where she is, but how she gets to us is through her heart. And when you meet somebody who can touch you through their heart without knowing where you live or what you drive or how much money you're going to pay for a subscription and they just connect with you on that level, there is something to be said about that. And Meg is going to speak about some of the new things that she's doing in her life. So when you're listening to Meg talk about the new thing that she's doing, just remember that everything that Meg does with us, she connects with her heart. So whether it's something that she's done forever or she's decided tonight to become something else, she leads with her heart and I will follow her wherever she goes. So I want to introduce my friend Meg Walsh to you tonight. Welcome to the Gratitude Girls. Wow, that is an incredible, incredible introduction. I am so touched. Thank you, Catherine. You're welcome. You're welcome, Meg. Thank you so much for being here. I know that there's so much for us to talk about. You know, like where, where do we start? But I'm thinking, let's start with the moment that we're in. So what part of the world are you in? Uh, I'm sitting, looking out at the Severn River which is about two hours north of Toronto, which is where I live now, Port Severn, Ontario. Thank you, COVID-19. Yeah. <laughs> so you and I used to live maybe 20 minutes away from each other, and now we're about four hours. <laughs> but, you know, just as close as ever because we have the heart. Yes, yes. Well, thank you. Thank you for connecting with us because when we talked about this we live 20 minutes from each other when we initially talked about you being a guest on gratitude girls that was like over a year ago and then over six months ago we booked this and who knew right like who knew what would be facing what we would be facing for technology and all of the mm -hmm. different things that that happened and so now that you live there tell us a little bit about what is a day in the life of Meg? What, what are you doing with yourself? Uh, well, you know, we just moved here. So it's been a bit of a, a whirling dervish. Um, we gave up our place in the city in High Park and squatted. It was a bit too cold for the cottage. It's not insulated here. So we hung out with my parents for about six weeks, my partner and I. And they are in Lakefield, Ontario, which is near Peterborough, about two and a half hours east of us. Um, and then two weeks ago, we moved here and spent six days painting. So we hadn't been painted since the 70s or 80s, I would say. Um, so we gave it a fresh coat of paint and, and it feels great. And we unpacked and really it's just been I really just feel like I've just had my first day here where I didn't do anything moving in wise. I, um, my partner made me a little corner of the living room. There's really, there's, there's the kitchen and there's the living room and there's the bedroom. So um, most of the outside, but you know, I need a space inside for teaching and for, you know, myself. So we, I got a little rug and put my meditation cushion down and a little bench and I just had my little place and it's you know it takes two square feet and I just it made all the difference for me to just feel at home and settled in and uh, today I taught a class on the dock and then I had a meeting and then I on zoom or uh, on the phone good old-fashioned phone meeting Yes. And then I did a course on um, a little workshop on pregnancy and yoga therapy. And then I made some dinner and now I'm here. It just flies. 
I, I think it's my own defense mechanism kicking in that I know how to fill up space and time. It is flying by. I feel like the days are just, you know, one of those montages ripping off the calendar. That's what's happening. So I'm hoping yeah. to slow down my pace. <laughs> Well, Meg, thank you for sharing. We had a slight glitch in your technology there, but we, we, hear, we hear you now. It's fine. The funny thing is that you and Lori and I all have something in common. Like, who would have guessed that you would be on the show tonight and all three of us are moving or have just moved in the last, <laughs> like, we're talking about a couple of days. So this is really no coincidences how the energies have been, you know, bringing us together. Now you talk about teaching. And so for the guests, because I didn't mention your profession, right? Like truly your mm. profession for the guests and the viewers tonight, can you share a little bit about what are you teaching? Well, big question, Catherine <laughs> on the Don and I always say, you know, we sell yoga at the studio and in my, in my private work. But what I'm, what I'm really interested in is community and relationship. So um, I, I do yoga therapy. I specialize in movement and lifestyle. Um, I'm well-versed in Ayurvedic principles, you know, holistic nutrition, and a lot of self-care. But I like, to, I like to look at it as a bit of a puzzle that fits into the larger or the, the yeah we have a technology glitch the micro, the macro and the micro and how it all sort of works in relationship is what matters to me starting with ourselves so starting with the relationship we carry within ourselves, with our own demons. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. We, we're, we're catching you. It's okay. Any better? It's fine. Yes, it's fine. Any better? Yes. It's better until okay. than it wasn't. Okay. I'm moving. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. See if that, see if that works. Don't hang out the door though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we know what you're doing. We know we, we live in the country. All three of us live in different <laughs> kinds of country, but we totally understand. Let me tell you, we don't know what next month's going to hold for us. <laughs> Lori, right. You're next. You're next. <laughs> we hardwired ethernet cables drilled into the house so that I could be on the show tonight because Lori, oh, said, amazing. Hard, Lori said hardwire ethernet cables to where you're going to work. And we did five and a half hours later. So yeah, we got it. Awesome. Awesome. I'm glad you're there. You know, Meg, you, you talk about, you know, so many things that you do and, and from your heart and look at the efforts that you're going through to be with us and share with us tonight. And because, you know, our show is about gratitude and I know that you have so much of that in your heart. I just want you to think about that because it, few minutes, I'm sure Lori's going to ask you that question. You know, think about the things that brought us to where we are and, you know, what are we grateful for? And sometimes, you know, how do we find gratitude when we're in those moments of turmoil or change? Or like you said, thank you to COVID-19, right? Like who knew what was going to happen? But we all find things to be happy about and things to be grateful for. So this, this show is all about that. It's all about what we find Sometimes they're things that we don't realize we're grateful for them because at the moment they're, they're sort of surprising us and they're masked as another type of emotion and then it ends up being gratitude. But think about, think about the gratitude that you have in your heart and maybe you can share. Um, well, I'll let Lori ask you a question before I ask you that. <laughs> I'll, I'll pass you on to Lori. Yes. So, so yeah. Um, like Catherine said, or all three, well, Catherine's just moved. You've obviously just moved. I'm in the process. <laughs> so I'm a little bit in three different houses at the moment. So it's, it's interesting with us, but the same thing, we are moving 
I already live way out in the country, but I'm moving way, way, way further out in the country. So, uh, so we will see how, yeah, we will see how our internet works next month. <laughs> same, time, same place. But so tell me, so, you know, this is the gratitude girl show. So, and, and everybody has something in their life, you know, that they're grateful or thankful for. But if you could think, and, and usually you have a million things, but like, if you could think of like some story, like that you would like to share with our listeners, you know, that, um, where you could just share something of, of gratitude and thankfulness of, of whatever you'd like. Um, how's the connection? Good. Better? Okay, great. Um, the, well, the first story, ooh, you know, I, I'm a bit nervous being live, so I'm just going to go with the first story that popped in my head. Um, so it was a few years ago, and Don and I had just uh, reopened the studio, and we had a cottage, uh, a little cabin on Christian Island, which is about three hours from Toronto, but when you're there, it's a native reservation, and when you're there, it's white sand, blue water, you feel like you're in Jamaica, except when you turn around, it's a Canadian landscape. It's, it's unbelievable that it's three hours from Toronto. Um, so we're, we're driving home, and we used to stay over Sunday nights, so skip the traffic. And we have the studio now 13 years. We're driving home and Don perks up. We're about to pass by the shoppers in Barrie on Bayfield Road, which anyone who, from Toronto will know Bayfield Road because that's how you get to the Sega Beach. And he says, I feel like we should buy a, a EpiPen. And I said, we should trust that. Let's go buy that EpiPen. They're $150. We go in, the store is about to close. He buys it. He puts it in the glove compartment. And he says, I feel like we should bring it to the studio. And I was like, okay, I'm teaching tomorrow morning at 9.30. Catherine, were you in that class? You may have been in that class. It was my yin class, Tuesday morning at 9.30. And at the end of my class, 75 minutes later, one of my students, um, the door had been propped open for the beautiful songbirds and the, and the breeze and things. And it was a nice warm class. So we had the back door open. And right at the end, a wasp flew in and I'm in my head thinking, do I say anything and alert everyone and possibly, you know, disrupt everyone's peace or everyone's pretty chill in where they are. So I'm going to leave them and I'm going to just let everyone know to cue. I'm just going to cue everyone to get up really, really slowly and to not make any sudden movements. So I'm cueing people to do this. And the moment, you're going to wonder why this story, I'm so grateful, why this is my gratitude story. <laughs> but the moment that um, my student is, just, she decides to stay longer in Shavasana than I had cued for. So as she's waking up, she feels something and she moves her hand and the wasp stings her on her eyeball. She is the one student who has a very severe allergy. So she runs out of the studio and all the students band together and all the students are taking care of her and I'm there and I had just done my CPR training maybe a month earlier. Have never used it, have been working with kids with, uh, in the service industry, working in studios for 13 years. I've never used it. And suddenly I had to stab this woman with an EpiPen because she needed one and hers was in her car because why would she bring it to a yoga studio when she was just coming to practice? So we, I knew exactly what to do and I had the other teacher in my class run outside so she could flag the ambulance. We called somebody else called 911. I stabbed her with an EpiPen and wrapped her in a blanket and I sat there holding her head in my lap and kept her calm. And everyone kept really chill and calm and cool and banded together. And this woman, um, we went, I went to the hospital with her and we sent her a card, probably through Catherine, I don't recall. <laughs> um, 
and sent her flowers in the hospital and and she was great and we have this great relationship this was her first time at the yoga studio could have been this very different experience but i find myself grateful for trusting my intuition and for my community constantly and that's you know that's kind of a, a shiny example i guess kind of a memorable experience for sure so it pops out but this um this way that that things click and can come together and for me trusting in myself or trusting in my partner at the time you know you have that intuition go with it and you never know and into this day that was four years ago or th right maybe three years ago we haven't needed it since we keep two on hand now behind the desk. They expire every year also. So, you know, it's like $300 a year just in case. We've never needed it since, thank goodness. But I was just so glad that I had taken that CPR course, that I didn't lose my shit, pardon my French, <laughs> and, and just had a little bit of um, grounding. And I, you know, I, I attest that to meditation and to the energy, I, you know, it's very circular. I think I feed off them and they feed off me. We, re we really influence one another. Wow, Meg, that is, uh, that is an amazing story. And your attention to detail and how you do cue people. I'm surprised you didn't cue the wasp to fly back out because, you know, <laughs> you, I'm sure the wasp was about to go to sleep. That's a, that's an amazing story. You probably had him stunned before. He probably didn't know what hit him. And when she touched him, it woke him up, right? Because of how you are the energy in the room of what you did and what you do. It's, it's truly amazing. It really well, I is. agree with that. And animals, you know, I have a dog and when I'm practicing or anyone is, he flocks to people. So <laughs> I have no doubt that that darn wasp um, really, you know, I don't think he was in attack mode. I think he was in chill mode and he was checking, checking things out. But, uh, you know, of course, in retrospect, I wish I had been more direct, but that was, you know, that was the decision I made in the moment. And I think she might have knowing her that she had a, an allergy she might have had a different response and mm. you know maybe uh, but i couldn't you couldn't imagine a more terrible spot really to get a, a wasp right sting. oh my gosh oh. really really and and yet and yet everything thank goodness worked out worked out okay yeah you know, there are so many stories I'm sure you can share about gratitude. I'm, I'm like you said, you're just going with the one that's in the moment because this is a totally live show, unrehearsed, and we want it to be a conversation as we're having right now. We really like the live aspect of what we're doing. So we'll, we'll just do something that we did this every show. And we'd like to pass it over to you in the sense that if you have a question that you would like to ask Lori and or Lori, and I or I, please feel free, feel open, don't feel free, feel open to share the question and then direct it to us. Let us know who you're directing the question to and we would love to answer it. Can it be anything? Yeah. Can I ask you to tell me the story of you and David? <laughs> I love oh this gosh. story. Okay. This story. Do you oh, know what boy. I mean? Yeah, I'm going to tell the story and I'm going to condense it because I know that we have a time restraint. So, okay, I'll tell you some things that maybe you don't know. I decided to go on a, on a holiday with my daughter when I lived in New York and I dialed 1-800-CLUB-MED from a payphone. <laughs> and I did that and said, I'm going to take my daughter away for Christmas because I had her every other Christmas. I was a single mom. And that Christmas, I thought I'm going to take her away. And it was pretty brave of me because, you know, I did it like it was nothing. But, you know, I was still a little bit nervous because she was four under five. And I thought we need some us time. So I went to Club Med with her to a kids club. At, the, at that time, they were called Kids Club. And we went to Eleuthera. Eleuthera Club Med is no longer there. It was wiped out by a hurricane. So we, we got there and, you know, it was good. She was young and I was listening to what they were telling us to do. And one of the things they told us to do was to let the kids go with the kids. And I thought, well, that's fun. And my daughter didn't really want to do that. And my daughter did not want to take off her socks and she didn't want her toes to be in the sand and she didn't want to take off her sweater. And she was like, I want to be with my mommy, you know, but I don't want to do any of that. So I asked her if she wanted to go with the kids and she said, not really. Then finally the GOs as they're called, they asked me to just, try it, you know, try it with her. 
And I said, I don't think she wants to. And they really encouraged me. They said, she will have a good time. We know what's going to happen. So I was, you know, building up the anticipation here of how am I going to handle this? I was getting slightly anxious and my daughter was responding to my being anxious and she didn't want to go. And they said, please watch through the window. And she was crying. And she had, you know, her socks on, her sandals, her sweater, and she looked scared. And I'm thinking, why am I letting her do this? She's going to hold this against me for the rest of my life. So I set that in motion. I told myself that's what was going to happen. And that was the wrong thing to do. So I watched. And then I watched that she turned around and she walked away and she wasn't crying anymore. And I thought, wait a minute, I'm still responding to her crying. And now she had turned around and they were engaging her. But I was not ready to accept that. So I was upset. And they said to me, you're like, just go for a walk and come back. So I did. But I was still responding to the initial response that she had. And I was walking along the path right by the ocean and I was not paying attention and something flew in front of me and I thought I was being attacked by, I don't know what. And I looked up and I bumped into David and I looked into his eyes. This is a story, right, Meg? Yeah, this is the story you want me to tell? It's a different story, but that's okay. I'm, I, oh, shoot, okay. Well, anyway, this is the story of how we met. And I bumped into him and I looked up and I met his eyes and knew that he was the person for me for the rest of my life at that moment. Wow. What was the story you wanted me to tell? Oh, just how you were together and then you separated, you divorced and then you got remarried. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'll tell you in 30 seconds. So I've married my husband three times. So after that amazing (laughs) love story, we were married and got married again to each other while we were married in a religious ceremony a few years later. And then we separated. And after 16 and a half years, got, we separated and got divorced. And 16 and a half years later, we got back together. And we got remarried here. So we got married in three different places in two different countries in three different states. And (laughs) we got remarried and came to Ontario to rebuild our life over 12 years ago. That's the part of the story. So it's a true love story that no matter what, nothing was taking us apart. So hopefully I answered your question and told the story you wanted. Thank you. Thank Thank you you. for indulging me. I'm such a fan. I friggin' love your husband. (laughs) One of the cutest men, such a sweet, like just I just love him I just love him I love Thank hugging you. him I love how he talks about you and looks at you and waits for you and just you are his son and he just basks in you and it makes my heart so happy Thank you I know David feels very fondly about you and he's he shows his emotion and I love that he does that so I appreciate that you recognize that mm-hmm. Would you like to ask Lori a question uh, well, now I know how you and Lori met. Lori, can you tell me about your um, background? Yeah, so um, this background that you're looking at is just a virtual background is what it's called. Um, oh. So right now behind me, I have, like I said, I'm in the process of moving. So I have lots of boxes and clutter and all kinds of stuff behind me. So um, what this is, is just you take an image and you um, can go into the settings and set a virtual background. And so oh. it's kind of, you know, and then I have a little promotion thing there of um, on my, you know, on my personal site or whatever. But my favorite colors are hot pink and purple. So I found this cute little office scene that had hot pink and purple in it. And I thought, well, that's, if I was going to design my room, that's probably what it would look like. So (laughs) there we go. Cool. I've never seen a virtual background before. Shows you how much I do Zoom. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we taught you a few things tonight, right? Personal ID, 
and yeah. uh, in the meeting room and this. Well, that's great. I'm so glad when we can share knowledge with each other. So Meg, let me ask you if you would be kind enough to share with us and our audience something. What can we do in 60 seconds together? Can we take a breath? Can you teach us how to breathe? Oh, I would love to. I would love to teach you thoracoabdominal breathing. I'm really interested and sort of obsessed with thoracoabdominal breathing. So we're going to sit up tall and just do a little, kind of little dance in your seat. Just move your shoulders around, move your hips around, and then stop and settle. And that helps kind of eliminate some extra tension. Close your eyes. Okay, and then you're going to root down through your sitting bones down toward the ground, like a tree with roots that are reaching toward the center of the earth. You're gonna relax your belly, let your shoulders soften, and then reach up toward the sky, toward the clouds, towards the stars, through the crown of your head. So you're kind of this bridge between what's above and what's below. Okay. And then it can be very helpful to put a hand on your chest, a hand on your belly. You don't have to, but if you want to, you're welcome. And in thoracoabdominal breathing, um, think of a balloon that's not, um, not ballooned, not in, uh, filled up yet with air, and that's just sitting in your chest. As you inhale, the balloon fills up. So you're gonna breathe in through your upper lungs, your middle lungs, your lower lobes of your lungs, and then your belly. So this balloon kind of chronologically inflates. You're gonna pause the top, and then draw the lowest part of your abdomen in toward your spine, and exhale slowly from your navel, your lower lobes of the lungs, middle lungs, upper lungs, nose. Just pause in the emptiness. We're going to do that again, inhaling through the nose to the upper chest, middle, lower lungs, navel. So you're about 90% full. And then exhale, contract the low belly and exhale from your navel, lower lungs, middle lungs, upper lungs, nose. We'll do one more of those. Inhaling, you're filling up from your nose to your navel. You're pausing, you're contracting your low belly and exhaling from your navel to your nose. Every last drop empties, maintain the contraction for the whole exhale and then pause and experience your body without breathing in or out. Just that moment of stillness. It's called the enlightened breath. Okay. And then come back. And uh, I'm curious with how you're both feeling um, post holding yourself, it's kind of a loving touch, and post breathing, if you feel, how do you feel? Feels good, feels relaxed. Yeah, good. Yeah, so I am, this breath is, um, it's sometimes called pelvic floor breathing. It's sometimes called thoracoabdominal breathing. It's sometimes called balloon breathing. Um, it doesn't really matter. The idea of moving a lot of us breathe right to our belly and we're very shallow lung breathers. So I like to think of the lungs, um, imagine you're a sculptor, you're an artist and you are sculpting this lung that is moving, that's filling up. And so as you inhale, your lungs get bigger, your diaphragm lowers. And then as you exhale, the air goes out, the lungs shrink, the diaphragm comes back up. So at the same time, the diaphragm is kneading uh, the intestines. So it's, it's pulling out all of the minerals and vitamins from what you have um, ingested, but also from your life. So it's helping you sort of metabolize your emotions and process when you're breathing. It's also the pausing um, supports vagal tone. And vagal tone is something I'm fascinated with. There's a great book on vagal tone uh, that is sort of 
getting popular now, but when we work with vagal tone, we, we increase our stress resistance or resilience. So we bounce back from stress even more efficiently, and then we get less stressed out to begin with. So it's this really helpful, applicable to pretty much every human who experiences stress for any reason. Um, and that really interests, it, it just intrigues me because how our bodies are built is not that different from our bodies from 3000 years ago, but what stresses us out now and how we take care of ourselves post stress is very different than 3000 years ago. So this, this breathing can be very helpful any time of day, whether you're sitting or lying down is very nice. Um, and for me, the key is to work with the pause at the top of the in breath and at the bottom of the exhale. So that's sort of, it's it, 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 the difference between, you know, like grass and wheat grass or some sort of <laughs> like this. It's, you know, it, yeah, it's grass. It's fine. It's good. It's a green or it's something that's astronomical for your, like every system in your body. Meg, I really love that you went through this example with us. And this is what I mean about your attention to detail. You're able to walk us through it, explain it to us, talk to us, and then have us want more. Oh. Like this is this is truly something. I, I how will our what if we want to learn a little bit more about what you're doing? Where can we go and visit that aside from calling you, which we'll put the contact details? Is there somewhere else that we can learn from well, you? Sure. Yeah. You know, I have a website and I have an Instagram. And I have a Facebook. So those are pretty direct avenues to me. Um, I have email. Uh, <laughs> and do you have a, a course that you can put people in or is everything customized? Uh, I'm pretty individual. So I, I certainly lead group classes. Um, I'm, I'm a, a what's the word? Not a, like a, like a healthy obsession with breath. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very in love with the breath, but also with movement. And uh, a couple of years ago, I started studying Pilates. Um, and Pilates and yoga therapy are phenomenally similar. So my background is in a Krishnamacharya lineage of yoga therapy. And everything was called, you know, warrior two variation. Um, Cobra variation. And for me, when I started, I started taking Pilates with Jess Lemon, who's incredible, one of my favorite humans and teachers. And I learned this whole language. So I started studying Pilates. Um, and I, I'm a big anatomy nerd and biomechanical way of being in your body and, and healthy movement. So I started getting into that and it gave me this whole new language. So I love to customize that. That's sort of my specialty is customizing right. the practice just for you. Um, that is biopsychosocial, spiritual. So to take into consideration your stress, your lifestyle, whether you have five minutes a day or two hours a day, I can customize something that's going to be effective. Um, mm. Yeah. And, I you know, love that. Thank you. I do too. It's fascinating. And now I'm studying psychotherapy. So in... Uh, I have five more years <laughs> to my degree. I've, I'm just starting my third year this September. So it's a seven or eight year degree, but when I'm done, I'll be a registered psychotherapist. So I love this. Um, I think there's so much about the body and the mind and yeah. I, I, I really particularly um, enjoy working, enjoy, well, I don't really enjoy it, but I find it effective and I'm, I'm satiated uh, and, and it's rewarding to work with trauma. So I, mm. most of my clients, uh, are dealing with some sort of trauma and that the nice thing about movement and breathing is that it applies to mental illness. It applies to physical, it applies to pain. I did my thesis in chronic pain because I used to have chronic pain. I don't any longer. And I will give a little tip of my hat to my partner, who's the world's best osteopath, if I may yeah. be so bold. <laughs> <laughs> of course so. you may. Of course you may. So let me, let me ask you a question about pain. We all have some kind of pain, right? We, we, we bump something, we're moving, we're picking up boxes. Uh, you know, we run too much, we walk too much. 
when we feel that impact of pain, and this is, this is my last question for the night. I said I would keep my eye on the time, Meg. This is my last question. So if, if we do something and we feel it, what do you recommend we do with the moment of impact? Stop. Stop. Stop and feel your body. Stop and feel uh, your body and also feel your experience of your experience. Um, so what I mean by that is I know when I get hurt, I get scared. I get scared right away. So I try to comfort myself because there's a very young part who's just like, ah! <laughs> no, stop. Ow. Right. Um, and, and, and maybe not every time, but I try to the, I mean the body of like a blunt object, you know, even just stubbing your toe for a moment, it can be so startling. So it's really important to just stop and take a moment, uh, and be with it. Um, I hope that answers your question. I'm also really, can I go on for one yeah. more? Moment? Yes. Yes. Um, I'm really interested too in when working with chronic pain, I like to advise my students um, to think of chronic pain as a yellow, red, green light system. So the pain is the red light, which is maybe the chronic, maybe the throbbing. If you have chronic pain, you never want to do anything that makes your pain worse. If you don't have chronic pain and you might find that, you know, I've had so many students over the years that say, oh, getting into pigeon pose hurts, but once I'm there, it's fine. So the transition is kind of a yellow light. It's a warning. So in practice, when you're working re to rehabilitate, you want to avoid not just the pain, but also the pre-pain signals. So anything, these kind of whispers, if, if, if pain is a, a voice that's yelling, before anyone yells, they talk. Before they talk, they might kind of whisper to you. So it could be holding your breath. It could be catching uh, tension in your chest or your jaw. It might be uh, minor thighs will grip if I'm about to get pain. So if you can kind of figure out what your pre-pain signals are, your yellow lights, and mm -hmm. stop there, that can be a really effective way of uh, slowly but surely moving out of pain. And at least when you're on your mat, you know. Well, I want to share something that when we moved into this house, there was a space that was really big and it was more of a thoroughfare, but it was like it's square. And I thought, let's put an oriental carpet down here. And this is my yoga space. And you know, it's funny because you said like, just find a corner, right? Like you just need your corner to do that. And although this space is in the middle of the house, it is the perfect space to go and feel. It's sort of like the grounding space. So I love what you said about find our yellow light. I think that we could talk about this for a really long time because I would love to go through some of the breaths. We'll have to do that off the air of this show, but maybe Laurie and I could ask you to come back and visit us so that we could learn some more of the breaths of what you do. And then we can teach, promote that to, um, to our, our coaching. So we can talk to uh, the people that come to us for advice and, and share with them how they should be in touch with you. So if we could just grab another concept, a parting concept, if we were going to talk to one of our clients who's, you know, talks to us about all the things that they do so that we can manage with them, what is one thing that we can do to talk about, well, Meg taught us to say this and Meg taught us to do that. And then we can, we can, give that advice. And then of course that client can think about what they want to do with it. So what, what's something that we can mimic about what you, you can tell us about breath and pain and change? Well, my teacher would say before you teach anyone, anything, make sure you practice it for a year. Love it. So, yeah. So then you've experienced it in your body when you're sad, when you're mad, when you have inflammation, when you haven't slept well, when you've slept really well, 
when you've had a wonderful experience, when you've had a really challenging, so you've seen the practice and how it affects you in a number of different ways before you are ready to give it to someone else. So I think that I take that to heart, um, especially for pranayama. Pranayama breathing practice is very, um, it's, it's medicine. I think all movement and breath mm. is medicine. So I would say, try it on, use it for a bit before you recommend it to every, anyone else and give that same advice to your, to your clients. And we'll say it came from you. And that's the point. The point is that's, this is the advice that's coming from you because we can't teach what you teach, but we can certainly say that you are a guest on our show and you taught us about this breath and this is what you taught us to do and say. And certainly um, after 10,000 hours, we'll, we'll talk about teaching it, but we can pass on the good word. Meg, this is such a valuable, valuable show for so many reasons. I am so glad that we made it here tonight, all of us. There was nothing that would stop us from coming together. And Lori, as our guests are watching tonight and they're thinking, I, you know, I want to be in touch with Meg and we know that they can gather all that information from our website, but perhaps, you know, if somebody's watching tonight and they want to share something with us and they want to share something with our audience, how can they do that? And Meg, from the bottom of our heart, the core of our heart, thank you so much, so much for being here tonight. Every word that you said is a gift. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much for both of you for thinking of me and uh, kind of twisting my arm a little. I was quite nervous. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes, Thank you. you did great. And yes, yeah, story, stories is inspiring as well as the teaching on the different things. It's incredible. I appreciate that. And yes, viewers, if you would like to be on our show, Go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash gratitude girls. Right there, you can hit message. And when you send us a message, share with us your gratitude story that you would like to share with the world. That message goes to Catherine and I both together at the same time. And then we will read it, leave us your contact information of how you want us to get back in touch with you. And we will get with you with our calendar and let you know when you could be featured on our next show. And if you want to touch base with us, you can do that through our website and you will catch us here next month, the fourth Tuesday of every month, 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central, 7.30, gosh, Mountain, Mountain, and 6.30 Pacific. Lori, I don't know why that thing comes so hard to me. <laughs> so you come and meet us next month and we'll be here with some more news and some more changes. Lori might be having a green screen, but maybe she'll give us the real view. <laughs> we'll be in new houses and we'll get to share some of that with, with you and with our guests. Meg, thank you so much. Lori, I love you. Thank you for all that you do. This is such a big part of, of my life and the life of our family. We're grateful. We're grateful for every, for everyone, every story, every word means so much to us. Thank you to our audience. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Love you, Ms. Catherine. And thank you for being with us, Meg, and sharing with us. And everybody, we will see you same time, same place next month. <laughs> Have a great night, everyone.